Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. If you've already been caught up on your Yu-Gi-Oh news, great, you've already seen this before. But for the few people that want to know it, I'm going to give my opinions on the new uh, October 14th, 2019 Forbidden and Limited list today. I have gotten the opportunity to look at it before, but I just want to take a, a day, kind of digest it, and really see uh, what the list is. I didn't want to just give my knee-jerk reactions. I like to be put together with it. Actually, it's not a very large list. The last Forbidden and Limited list we had, which was a couple months ago, uh, it was a massive list, like a whole bunch of cards got hit, put around in different places. This one, I think it's nice and short and compact. I think it might be like uh, around 10 cards, maybe a little bit less than that even, or a little bit more. I, I could be wrong. I think just to preface it though, to get it out there, I think it's a good list. I'm really excited to play under this format. Very optimistic to see what the competitive future holds here. Uh, I think they solved a couple of the big problems. They left a couple of things untouched but we'll get to those in a minute. So looking at it here, yes, this list will be effective from October 14th, 2019. That is this Monday. So this is the last weekend you'll be able to play with some of these forbidden cards. Well, these two forbidden cards, those cards are none other than Guard Dragon Agar Pain, as well as Nightmare Mermaid, both from three to zero. This is actually pretty good timing as season one of Sealed on Yu-Gi-Oh! is coming to a close anyways, uh, but I could see a Guard Dragon hit coming from a mile away. I gotta be honest though, I wouldn't have been surprised if they allowed us to play with the engine for one more month. We're still waiting on cards like Striker Dragon, as well as there's another card in Chaos Impact that like recurs Levy and Near from the Grave or it searches it from deck even. Uh, we're still waiting on those cards, so I wasn't going to be surprised if they just didn't touch the engine and allowed us to have a full month to play with this engine like at full power. But uh, then again, this doesn't surprise me in the least. It was either LP or Agrapane. I'm actually kind of happy Agrapane got the boot as it was definitely the better one of the two. It's banned in the OCG, banned in here. Now, likewise, banned in the OCG is Nightmare Mermaid, and that is now banned here. I think it was just way too oppressive to give all decks an excuse to just be able to Orcus combo with two cards and nothing else. Finally realized that might have been a little bit too good, and I think banning it was the correct choice. That was, I think, on the one on everybody's mind was, uh, this is the problem card to really ban. You can still play Orcus. Orcus is still going to be a very real deck, I'm sure of it. Uh, but having Mermaid ban doesn't give the excuse for all other decks to be able to play Orcus. I'm happy with these two bans, though. I think they were very deserving picks. I'm very excited to see how it shakes up the meta. I think it's going to do a lot. Moving on to the limited cards, there's actually only one, and that is Sky Striker Mecha Widow Ank. I, I was kind of hoping Engage would see a hit in some way, maybe like to two or to one, but uh, to see Widow Anchor get hit, that's a little bit surprising, I think. Still Still, with Widow Anchor at one, I don't think Striker's going anywhere. Afterburner's a hell of a card, as well as Jamming Waves. I'm sure the deck will find a way to still play. Plus, there's new support on the way anyways. You guys see that other level four? I don't think it's particularly good, but it is more support on the horizon nonetheless. I still 1000% think you will be seeing a whole bunch of Sky Striker. Don't let this hit fool you. The deck is still going to be absolutely crazy. On to the semi-limited. There's only one card, and that is Dark Arm Dragon to two. I gotta admit, I was super excited when I saw this. It actually just went to three in the OCG, which is super surprising, but I think this card could go to three here in the TCG, and that might happen next list. Uh, but having it at two is super exciting nonetheless. It's at three in the OCG, and the OCG actually has Snow, which is one of the greatest grave yard manipulation tools in the game. Uh, we don't have that here in the TCG, so that does affect Dark Arms playability. So if it's not played in the OCG, I'm kind of hesitant to see if it'll be played here in the TCG. I hope it would be. That's kind of cool if it is, but if it isn't, I'm not surprised. A lot of cards just need to be good going first, and Dad is absolutely not one of them. However, the TCG, it has been proven that we are ready for two dads. And now for the things removed from the Forbidden Limited list. There's actually a lot of them. Chaos Emperor Dragon Envoy of the End is no longer on the list. That was from Semi Limited. I don't think this is a huge deal. The cards, uh, Errata makes it, I think, pretty much unplayable. Destiny Hero Malicious is now at three from two. I think this is a huge deal. This is probably the thing on the list that's got me the most excited. Malicious is still actually like a crazy card. I'm super excited to see how Dark Warrior decks can adjust with this and play it. Uh, I think Goki um, Orcus is going to be a real deck now. I'm going to try that out. That's going to be my go-to for sure. Malicious to three is really cool. I think this card is super powerful. I'm excited to see how Dark Warriors take advantage of this. Aether, the Heavenly Monarch, is from two to three. I don't think this is a huge deal. I wish it was, but Pantheism is still at one, 
and as long as pantheism isn't one i don't think this deck is entirely too real maybe somebody will prove me wrong though same with insector dragonfly going from two to three i don't think it's a huge deal uh charit for that matter too all these cards from two to three i think they're neat but i don't think they're really meta shaping i got excited when sure it went to two uh but then after seeing it do absolutely nothing uh i'm going to be very hesitant thinking it'll do anything at three stratos at three i never thought i'd be able to see the day that stratos would uh come to three here in the tcg but I think now we're at a point where it just, it doesn't even matter. Cards like a Hero Lives, uh, which would pull from the deck, are still at one, I believe. Uh, so as long as those cards, uh, I think if Hero Lives comes to three again, then I think that engine's gonna be crazy. But I think Stratos um, at three is not a major deal. It's neat, very neat but I don't think it's a huge deal. Construct is from one to three. It didn't make a huge splash at one, and I don't think it makes a massive difference being at three. With the Shadal Structure deck on the horizon, though, maybe something will be coming out of that. That's uh, a ways down the line, though. Royal Tribute is from two to three. We didn't see people try to play Gravekeepers with it at two, and I think giving them one more copy of an unsearchable card uh, I don't think it makes the, the world of difference. It doesn't make Gravekeepers any better. And then the big shocker of the ban list is Super Rejuvenation. From zero to three, big jump there. But I actually, I didn't know this at first, but the card's actually at three in the OCG as well. Then I think this card's nuts, but then again, uh, if we're thinking about it with the current Dragon Link deck or like Danger Thunder, uh, the way I thought about it is you can like discard cards from your hand with Danger Thunder, like you can discard dragons, but none of the dragons that you play in that deck are ones that you actually want to get out of your hand. The way I kind of judged it is you have to think, is Super Rejuvenation a better card than Sekka's Light? Because that's the majority of what those variants are playing is they're just playing whole bunch of monsters and Sekka's Light to round it out to be able to power through their deck. Cause Sekka's Light is an insane card. I'm not totally opposed to the idea of playing cards like Allure of Darkness and Golden Sarcophagus. I love that package actually. But the thing is, is I think uh, altogether, Sekka's Light will probably always trump Super Rejuvenation. Unless again, somebody finds an absurd way to break the card. But because you can chain these during the end phase, you can go like Super Juve, draw into another one and Super Rejuve again. So Super Rejuve going from zero to three, while it is extremely cool, I don't think it's gonna be making a world of difference. But maybe somebody will prove me wrong there. I hope so. And that's actually everything on the Forbidden Limit list. There's actually like 13 changes or something like that. I kind of took a brief count there. Maybe that's correct. But altogether, I think it's a very solid list. I'm happy with it. I think the big bands being Agarpain and Mermaid were definitely a big deal. I'm excited to see how that shakes up the meta. Very excited to play uh, with this upcoming season. I'm assuming you guys have checked out the ban list already. So if you've checked it out, let me know down in the description below what you guys think of the new Forbidden Limit list. And if you plan on buying any cards under this new ban list, you know, you want to pick up your Super Rejuves or something like that, use my TCG Player affiliate link down in the description below. If you use that link and buy anything in the session, I get a portion of what you pay for. It requires absolutely nothing of you. But that being said, uh, thank you guys for listening to me ramble today. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and definitely subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And uh, hey, I'll catch you guys next time.